Okay, welcome back to the channel and another head-to-head, -head. but this one with a bit of a difference because we're looking at irons of exactly the same type from 2017 to 2023. And I want to know what is the progression, if any, in the tailor-made P790s. Now those P790s that were introduced in 2017 have been pretty much a game changer for TaylorMade and for the industry. That sort of speed foam that was introduced into a hollow bodied iron has now become very much the norm. Every brand has got a hollow body iron with some kind of polymer inside. The question is how much progression has been made and uh, apart from, from a visual aspect, Technology wise, there's only been tweaks in the uh, P790s from that six year gap that we've got. There's a foam that still exists, it's different than the original one. The shaping and profile is a change, but ultimately, what happened in terms of performance? Now, the first surprise I got was just how different they do look, and I just don't mean from a shelf of peels perspective there was a lot of chrome in the original p790s it was an iron that i was really drawn to and it was a bit of a movement into what has become a sort of minimalistic design if you like in all irons where it's very minimal markings self-explanatory that one if you go into the new p790 there's a lot more of that brush satin with minimal amounts of chrome it's a lot cleaner design yet again a little bit more modern and it's certainly evolved and for me yeah they both look superb irons but the current p790 is probably without doubt visually the best version but the big difference for me was the shaping and the profile and uh, i'm looking down on the two seven irons right now and it's interesting because the new P790 has gotten a little bit bigger and certainly from heel to toe it's gotten a little bit bigger. The original version was a little bit stubbier. It, although the top line is very much identical, the heel to toe area is very much more compressed in that original version. And if I've got to be honest from my perspective who probably prefers and leans towards a smaller iron, certainly the original shaping of the P790 would be more appealing to me. But in the type of iron that they're trying to build here, which is essentially a player's distance iron, then maybe that bigger profile gives more of a uh, confidence to people who are wanting this type of iron so i'm not going to be critical of that then the difference for me and i've got to sort of tell you already i've collected dry ball data before we started this one which i normally do it the other way around and trust me you want to stick around until the end and have a look at it because it's a really interesting read but there's a couple of things that are also very very different and i'm going to start with uh, one element which uh We'll see if we can pick up and oh, is a challenge. And that is the sound and feel. I always talk about it. It's sometimes something that people just want to brush over and are not interested. The amount of comments that we get that say, who cares what a club looks like? Who cares what a club sounds like? It's all about performance. I get that to a degree, but for me, I want an iron to feel good and I've always had an issue with hollow bodied irons they're clicky by nature and uh, how much difference is there in that new version well I don't know whether you could tell from those two shots but I could certainly feel it the latter was without doubt yeah the um, the old version which is far more clickier in sound than the 2023 version which is without doubt a major change in any version of the p790s in terms of sound and feel it's much better than they've ever achieved before but the other noticeable difference for me and i didn't need dry ball data to sort of show me this was just the kind of consistency that was being achieved with the newer iron and i think that look the important thing to point out is that this isn't about gaining distance for me. I'm looking at an iron in this category to provide consistency. One of the criticisms of the initial type of irons, these kind of players distance irons, was the flyer. The inconsistencies in terms of one minute you're hitting the ball a seven iron 150, the next minute you're hitting it 140, that kind of drop off is really dangerous. And I think again, from what I'm seeing, that the, that is the big key change up don't forget in the 2023 model we've got a real change up a significant change up in the technology in that every iron 
whatever it be, pitching wedge through to your sort of four iron, whatever it may be, has been individually designed in terms of the weighting system that's inside it, where the tungsten is placed, and that'll be very different from what we had in the original iron in, uh, back in 2017. Do you know what, doing this video, it's hard to believe that these irons, this P790, which was, it was kind of an exciting time when this came along because it was, like I said, it was a quite a big progression, quite something quite different, whole different story. I can't believe it was six years ago. Not the best of swings with that one, and we'll, uh, we won't blame the club with that. And it's important to always realize that, that obviously clubs can only do so much, and that's why the whole forgiveness element for me is a real key talking point, what exactly is forgiveness? Well, it can only do so much. But what is noticeable is a more consistent performance for me with that new P790. And I'm gonna go back to it. It's by far, I mean, unless you sort of put these things head to head, you don't really notice the differences massively. But when you've got and you're hitting them, which I'm doing, switching side by side, then you start to sort of feel a difference and you start to see a difference. That's a much better swing. Solid ball flight, super consistent. They've got exactly the same shafting, by the way, and I am not exactly sure as to why, but every time I'll pick up the 2023 model, whether I like it or not, I'm hitting a much better shot. It's solid, it's a better sound and feel, it's a more consistent ball flight, and it may be only minor, the difference has been made in that six year period, but without doubt, they are very much visible. Now, let's go and take a look at that data that I collected. And this is the real interesting bit for me and for you really, because it's all about what has happened in terms of performance. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf mega store, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. Right, so let's get these kind of numbers up on screen. Don't know whether you can see there, and I'll put, a, I'll put up a, something for you now. That's a dispersion chart, which is, a lot of people ask for this, and I think sometimes you're fooled by the fact that this forgiveness element, is it gonna stop me from effect, effectively hitting most of my balls with a right to left ball shape right now? No, it doesn't, that's not what forgiveness is. The forgiveness element for me is the fact that front to back number, what is happening in terms of drop-offs when I'm not finding the center of the club face. So all of my grouping is very much to the left of center. I'm making some swing changes right now and I think it's worth to point that out because anyone who's been a long time viewer of the channel will probably recognize that I've lost in the region of maybe 15 yards in terms of carry right now but I've also gained a lot in other areas and that's something I'm working on but anybody who sort of highlighted that then that's the reason why but let's start off with the 2017 numbers a 145 carry effectively off a fairly slow swing speed of 74 mile an hour that ball speed relative to club head speed is really effective um, and we've got a spin rate of 4.8 with a launch angle of 20.3. Now for me, those numbers are, are really, they're good. I'm, I'm happy with that. They're, they're a consistent set of numbers. And as I said, you'll know that my spin rate with this kind of new swing is getting, creeping up a little bit higher. Um, but that's okay. There's nothing wrong with them numbers. And back in 2017, uh, apart from the fact I would probably hit the ball a little bit further with the swing I had, then I'm res that, that's respectable. But you then start to see the differences when I throw up these numbers of the 2023 model. The first one being the carry distance is three yards further off a slower swing speed. So ball speed is up by three mile an hour, but my club head speed was down by almost one mile an hour. That's a huge telltale sign in the advancements of technology. Whether we like to acknowledge it or not, we don't really need to look any further than saying, well, hang on a minute, he's just swung the club slower, but his ball speeds are faster and his carry distance is further. That's it, that's technology in a nutshell in six years. But then you throw in the addition of the spin number. And the spin has just increased by almost 600 revs. So we're now at 5.4 spin, 
with a launch angle of exactly the same at 20.3 and a slightly higher ball flight. Now we haven't put in their descent angle but it would be very much relative and again more promising and effective with the newer model. So it's always key to recognize, I, we all question how much progression has been made. Now, to me, that's quite a significant difference in performance. If we went year on year, or in this case, a two year cycle of P790s, we probably wouldn't have seen major leaps, but then when you go back that six year period, which we've done today, and look at that 2017 model, then you start to maybe just appreciate what they're doing in terms of technology and how the gains are minor but they are definitely there and for me that set of numbers has been the biggest telltale sign that i've seen in what progression looks like now for a lot of you that two or three yards and that increase in spin number increase in ball speed it might mean a great deal but if you're looking to optimize performance and without doubt there is a clear winner the 2023 model wins in terms of performance wins in terms of sound and feel for me and from a luxury department it's just progressed so it looks better but maybe that's just a modernization in terms of way clubs look nowadays that's it we're trying to keep I'm trying to look at a lot of head-to-heads -head right now because I realise there's still plenty of you with deliberations as to which club to go for. Maybe this one wasn't that, but it's certainly um, P790s in terms of 2023 will certainly be on your potential list of new irons. And I think what that has reiterated is they're a super set of irons and tick all the kind of boxes, in my opinion. Right, short and sweet, hopefully. I uh, appreciate you watching. I've got a few more to film today and there'll be plenty more coming your way in the next week or two. So keep your eyes peeled. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you don't subscribe already, then please consider doing so. Get your comments down below. Hit that like button and I will see you all soon.